I'm not sure when I became such a big fan of the uh, rapid KL transportation system in uh, Kuala Lumpur, but when I heard that the monorail has changed, they've added new four-car trains to the system, I got very excited. They've been refurbished as well, so I'm heading down to the monorail to check them out. Okay, I'm here at the monorail uh, station. This is the first station at uh, KL Central where the line begins and it goes, I believe, 10 stations up to uh, Tidiwangsa, which is the uh, terminal station in the other direction. I don't know much about the improvements that have been made, but I did see a couple of things online and I think they've added three new trains to the system and each train is four cars long and can carry uh, 500 people. The current trains are only two cars and when I rode on the monorail before I always thought that was too little. I mean the train is too small for the number of people that are waiting for the train and the, num the numbers of people that get on. So the four car trains I think will be a huge improvement. And when I first heard about it, I thought that's all there was to it. I thought they just added two more cars. But it turns out uh, one of the reasons it took so long to do this is that they took those four cars and refurbished them, completely rebuilt them from the inside out. And I'm pretty excited to see what they look like now. As I said, they've added three new cars to the system. But I don't know what that means in terms of the overall capacity. I don't know how many trains are running normally. And I also don't know if all three of these new trains are running at the same time. Maybe they only run you know, one or two of them on each day, or all three of them are in uh, operation all day, every day. I really don't know. So I might have to wait here at this station for a few trains to come and go before I get one of the new ones. We'll uh, see how that works out. While we're waiting, I can show you the map of the system. And I just counted the stations and it looks like there are 11 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 in total. And we are starting down here at uh, KL Central. I don't know how far I'm going to go on the train today. I don't really have a destination. I'm riding on the monorail just so that I can see what it looks like. I'm going to walk here to the very front of the platform and uh, I can see the train approaching and get a look at it right from the uh, front. There are the tracks there. I just noticed that there's a sign here, a red sign for two car train and a yellow sign for four car train. I don't really know what that means. I think when the train shows up, it's gonna be pretty easy to tell whether it has two or four cars, so they don't really need to have them in different colors. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. And they have that sign at uh, every gate here. With the two car trains, you never knew, at least I never knew where they were going to stop on the platform. Sometimes they come all the way to the front, sometimes all the way to the back, sometimes in the middle, so you kind of had to run a little bit to uh, get to the train. But with a four-car train, maybe it fills up the uh, entire platform. Yeah, I think so. It looks like if there were four cars, it would fill this whole platform from one end all the way uh, to the other. Very exciting refurbishing this train must have been an interesting project. The first thing that occurs to me is how expensive it would be. Um, seems like taking something old and uh, making it new would cost as much or more than just buying a brand new one. But perhaps this uh, monorail system, they can't do that. Maybe they, they can't just buy a brand new train. Uh, maybe they just don't make them anymore, I really don't know. So perhaps uh, it was actually more economical or it was their only option to refurbish the old ones. 
Uh, here comes the monorail. And this one has four cars. So either we got lucky or the majority of them are all four car trains now. Or is that four cars? I can't really tell from here. Oh yeah, I think this is the brand new train. It looks much fancier at the front here. New paint job, much wider, I think. Okay. I think I'm counting four cars. Let's see how much of the platform it fills up. I think it does look different. These doors are different, aren't they? They look more like the doors from the uh, MRT line. Oh yeah, it's completely different inside. Look at this. Oh, much nicer. It's uh, much more uh, wide open, a lot more space here. On the old trains, when you walked in, there were seats right here in the middle and there was just like a narrow passageway. And there are the uh, controls. They look very similar to the original train that I remember. So I don't think they've uh, like started with brand new trains. These are definitely the old trains and then they uh, refurbished it, updated it. Oh, here comes the driver. Just checking out the new train. And I hope I'm not making the driver nervous by uh, filming the uh, cockpit. Even the announcements have been updated. That first voice, that was like a British male accent. I've never heard that in the Rapid KL before. Nicely air conditioned. This is our first stop. Sumbamthan, something like that. I walked by here the other day as I went to the Royal Museum. So if you wanted to walk to the Royal Museum, this is the uh, stop that you would uh, come to. Let's see if we get the, uh, the British voice again. Stand clear. Closing. I like that voice. Very gentle, very commanding. I want to see if we can actually see the uh, National or the Royal Museum from here. That was the old Istana Negara, the old National Palace where the King and Queen lived before. And it's right across the river here. But we might not be able to see it through the trees. Oh, there it is right there. Those two yellow domes. That's the Royal Museum. And that used to be the home of the uh, King and Queen of uh, Malaysia. I never knew it was there before I went to visit it the other day. And getting to that museum is not easy because you have to get past all these big highway systems that go on all sides of the museum. So walking there is a bit of a challenge, I found out. I think 
I'm going to get out of this station. This is as far as I really need to go. And then I'm going to take the next train uh, back to uh, KL Central. My first ride on the refurbished monorail. When I was uh, doing a bit of research on this, I learned that they've also increased the frequency of trains, particularly during peak hours. So they said there should be no more than eight or nine minutes between trains. And there it goes. As I said earlier, they've added three trains right now. And I think by November, man, it's loud here. By November, they're going to add two more. And then I read that they're going to add seven more in the future, like over the next two years. Or maybe it was seven in total over the next two years, including these three. I'm not sure about that. I, I couldn't quite figure out the numbers. But any improvement is a good thing. Ah, and here's the competition. We have one of the old two-car trains coming, so we get to get a uh, contrast. I think it do does it look more narrow? Like have they managed to make them wider? As you can see, the two cars only takes up half of the platform. And then the two other cars would fill up this area over here. So if you were waiting for the train down here, you'd have to run to catch it up there. And this train is departing at 10.42. So we can see how long it takes for the next train to come. Those poor people riding in an old fashioned two car train. Not me. I ride in the brand new four car train. As I was listening to the announcement for this station, MR3, I wondered if this was the most difficult one to pronounce. I mean, that is a real mouthful. I often had trouble with this one, Tun Samban San. I always wanted it to say, you know, Samban or Samsan. I forget that there's three syllables, Tun Samban San. This one, Maharaja Alala, Maharaja Alala, Maharaja Alala. Maharajalalalala. You are now at Maharajalalalalalalalalala. So. And Titty Wongsa wins the prize for the funniest name in English, clearly. Um, Titty Wongsa Station always makes me giggle a little bit, but I think this one is clearly the most difficult to pronounce. Maharajalalalalalalalala. As a technical note, I'm using the GoPro only today. I don't think I'm going to get out my Panasonic. And I have the Rode Wireless Go microphone here on my shirt collar. But I just realized that for all the video that I shot up until this point, the microphone had flipped around. So the actual microphone was pointing away from me and was covered up by my shirt. And it was all kind of bunched up here. And I didn't realize it. So, uh, as much as I like using this, I have to figure out a way to attach this to a t-shirt or something. Either that or use the lav mic, you know, so it's a... I still have some kinks to work out in my microphone system. There goes one of the new trains on the other track. It makes me wonder if all the new trains are on that side 
going in that direction and you only get the old trains going back to KL Central. I have no idea. That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't know how they organize the uh, trains on this system. Now I understand how these signs work. The color doesn't matter. It just says that here, for this doorway, a four-car train will stop here. And further down the track, if they have a four-car train and two-car train, you can get on both trains at that end. But at this end of the platform, you can only get on the four-car train here. But in terms of updating the monorail system, one thing that jumps out at me are these doors. I was filming the other train and I started walking through that door and to be honest, I was kind of losing track of where I was because I was looking at the video and um, I could easily have just stepped off the edge and fallen onto the tracks. I really wasn't looking where I was going. Oh, here comes another uh, train, but it's another two car train. I don't want that. <laughs> I'm getting fussy now. Four car train or nothing. But this one looks like a little bit of a hybrid. The front looks newer. Not as beat up as that other one that went through. Here it is. And the time is uh, 10.51. So it took exactly nine minutes for this train to arrive. I should probably get on that train. Who knows how long I'll have to wait to get on the new four car train. But I'll wait one more and uh, see what happens. The next one will be lucky. There goes another two-car train. And that one's coming from KL Central and going to Tittywangsa. Now I'm very curious how many trains are running at any one time. And the other big improvement that they could make to the monorail system would be to have signs showing exactly when the next train is scheduled to arrive. That's something I really like with the modern MRT and LRT systems. You just look up and you see you only have one minute to wait, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, whatever it is. I think human nature is kind of funny that way. We really don't mind waiting, even waiting a long time. But we want to know, we, we need certainty about how long it is. That's why people go crazy at airports when a flight is delayed and they say, you know, there's going to be a short delay and you have no idea how long it's good, it could be. You know, it could be 15 minutes, could be an hour, could be two hours. You just don't know. And it's that uncertainty that drives you crazy. So I guess it's pretty complicated to do to have a re computer readout of exactly when the next train will arrive and the, the technology for the monorail system to do that probably just doesn't exist. But that would be a nice improvement. I'm not having much luck. This train is also a two-car train. So I think I'm gonna wait one more, just one more train and see if I can get on a uh, four car train. I've come all this way, waited this long, I might as well wait a little bit longer. I was just thinking that this man's job strikes me as pretty dangerous. He's down there sweeping the road with highway speed traffic going right by him. And he's got absolutely no protection at all. Nobody's watching his back. He's not watching his back either. No uh, safety cones, nothing like that. 
I don't know when I'm going to post this video. Who knows, I might be able to uh, put it together and post it today. And that would be uh, quite nice to do because tomorrow is Malaysia's Independence Day. That's why you see so many Malaysian flags around. Tomorrow is Saturday, August 31st. And back in 1957, that's the day when Malaya achieved its independence from the British Empire, became independent from the UK. Another one of the older two-car trains just showed up. And you can see uh, just on the outside how beat up it is with the paint job and things like that. So it's pretty clear that the system needed to be uh, refurbished and updated. The story of Malaysia's independence has a couple of interesting twists to it. One is that in Malaysia they actually celebrate like kind of a national day twice a year. Every other country in the world, you know, we have our Independence Day or National Day just once. In Malaysia, they do it two times. So they have Independence Day on August 31st. And as I said, that's the day when Malaya became independent from the British Empire. But then on September 16th, they celebrate Malaysian Day. And that's the day in 1963 when the modern country of Malaysia first came into existence. And that was a federation of Malaya plus Sarawak, North Borneo, and Singapore. And North Borneo is now called Sabah. So it's kind of interesting that they have uh, two independence days in a way. Whereas in Canada, we only have one, you know. The other interesting thing about Malaysia's Independence Day is that there was a ceremony at two minutes to midnight the day before. So today, August 30th at 1158, people gathered at Merdeka Square, uh, kind of Independence Square here in Kuala Lumpur. And that's where they have this huge flagpole. And at that time, the flagpole was flying the Union Jack of the UK but at two minutes to midnight they turned out all the lights everything went dark and they stood there in silence for two minutes and when the lights came back on at midnight the Union Jack was gone from the flagpole and it had been replaced with the new flag of Malaya. Aha! Fitting that at the end of that story my four car train has uh, arrived. So this will be my train back to KL Central. Uh, look at that. Gleaming and new. It'll be great when all the trains get replaced. Look at that. I really like this uh, open space here at the end of the train. It's just a lot easier to get in and out of the train and a lot more room for uh, standing. And there's the view behind the train. An interesting thing, of course, is that these trains go in two directions. So there's actually a driver's seat, a cab at each end of the train. So when they get to the final station, the driver has to get out of the cab at the other end of the train, walk all the way here, you know, unlock the door, sit down here, and then drive the train uh, back again. It's kind of like uh, Dr. Doolittle's uh, push me, pull you. You know, can go in both directions. So we're heading back to KL Central on the new monorail and I'm just going to walk 
to the uh, front of the train. easy at keeping my footing. We're going around a lot of curves. Just passing by the Royal Museum again. There's the old National Palace. You can just see the uh, golden domes of the old uh, National Palace there. to the uh, National Palace. This is the uh, pedestrian overpass that you have to take to get there. And then you walk through that little forested jungle area there, and then slowly, very slowly, make your way to the Royal Museum. Other things that are new on the uh, new monorail, these uh, hand grips are all new. And I think all this whole system of uh, poles that you can hold on to. They're all new as well. And uh, one thing I like, I noticed that while I was walking from the back of the train to the front, is that they also have hand grips on the side above the windows. So you've got these built in as well. And beside the door, really nice handles. Yeah, it's really pretty much a brand new train from uh, end to end. And I like the uh, color coat. I like the uh, lime green color, nice and cheerful. Lime green and uh, yellow. to uh, KL Central. And they usually organize it so that passengers get off on one side first and then they'll open the doors on this side to let people on, sometimes. I'm not sure what door's gonna open. Which one? Uh, that side. <clears throat> Your attention, please. Passengers are reminded to be aware of the parking. Look at that, though. At this station, there's more room. We've got a four-car train, but there's still more platform available. Maybe, yeah, two more cars, I think. So this platform could actually handle six cars in total. I don't know about all the other platforms, though. Interesting. So that is it for my monorail adventure for today. This is a fitting place to end it, I think, because I've always gotten a huge kick out of these in the system <laughs> in terms of low beams and things that you can hit your head on. This is a very extreme example. So uh, yeah, you don't, you gotta watch where you're going around here. You don't wanna hit your head on this beast. 
But anyway, there's the uh, monorail behind me, the new uh, four-car monorail, the refurbished cars. It gets the uh, Doug seal of approval. I like it.